Hello my dolls and welcome to the Cello Doll YouTube channel for another tip vlog. Today we're going to be talking about my three tips for how to score study a new concerto for the first time. Score studying is an incredible productive way to learn more about a new piece away from your instrument. For today's vlog, I'm going to be talking about one of my brand new pieces, but the tips I'm giving you today, you can use for any concerto, any instrument. Also, what inspired me to make this vlog is my current partnership with Prime Phonics. It's a classical streaming music service. I was really impressed with their audio library because I found this piece by Joan Tower. It's a very modern cello concerto and it can be very hard to find recordings online. And on Prime Phonic, I found the recording featuring Lynn Harrell, God rest his soul, phenomenal cellist, and he was the soloist. So I was very impressed it was on Prime Phonic and they have podcasts, interviews with the soloists of today, and catered playlists for mood, atmosphere, and it makes classical music very approachable for the 21st century. And you dolls can try it out with my promo code cello doll, all caps, and you can try it free for two months. That's almost an entire semester. If you're currently at a music school, you can have this resource. So again, use my code with the link in the description and you can try and explore Prime Phonic free. And it's also a great way to support cello doll. So what is score studying? It's when you sit down with your solo part, your score, the piano reduction, or the orchestra score, and you listen to a recording of your piece and follow along. So I'm gonna tell you what I like to do for my first time score studying, and it's a really effective way to enhance your time in the practice room. So let's start off with my first tip which is to write down any questions in your part that could be answered by listening to a recording. So some of these could be a complicated rhythm, time signature changes. In my case with the tower, there's a lot of crazy time signature changes. I have 3 a 10, 16, 12, 16. So having a recording to double check how I'm counting that is very appreciated. You could also listen for fingering options. Sometimes I'll see a melody and I could play it on the A string or up higher on the D string and I want to see what choice the soloist made. So be sure to mark your part with any questions you have. So the next step is to listen to your piece for the first time following along and paying attention to atmosphere characters. If there's a word, an image, or an adjective that really resonates with you, write down that word in your part and mark it. And it's really important to have emotional context or storyline when you prepare a concerto because it's going to make your performance that much more compelling. I'll give you an example with my Joan Tower piece. When I heard Lynn Harrell's entrance in the second movement, I was so awestricken with how beautiful it was and I actually wrote the word crying in my music. He actually made the cello sound like a vocal weeping. So in the music, the marking for that entrance is piano dolce. But there are so many versions of a piano dolce. So Lynn Harold's interpretation of that and the fact that it really spoke to me is going to help narrow down my options in the practice room. I'm going to have a shakier vibrato and I'm going to have a fast and more transparent bow. And that might sound something like this. So now that you had that initial listening, it's time for my third and last tip. Find sections in your solo where the orchestra is playing tutti or at a large volume. You need to know as a soloist when you gotta beef up your sound and project. This is a common occurrence in concertos when the composer has the solo instrument in conversation with the orchestra and you'll often see a back and forth. And that actually occurs in the Joan Tower piece that I've been referencing. So let's be realistic. 
your one solo instrument versus a hundred plus. And it's very hard to match that kind of volume. But I know that my bow has to be closer to the bridge. I need to have a lot of weight in my bow arm and firm contact so my sound can produce as much volume as possible. When you're having a conversation with the orchestra, that is a constant line. And if the volume is constantly dipping up and down, up and down, that's gonna break up that line and it's not gonna be smooth, powerful, or effective. So there's a part in my concerto when I have these small one to two measure chunks and the orchestra replies for the same amount. It's a very quick back and forth. And before I realized this whole thing with volume matching, I was sounding kind of like this. <laughs> said you can't do that because the full orchestra is replying right after you so when that happens my dolls it's better to crescendo and push your sound to a greater volume like this <laughs> Those are my tips for your first initial time score studying a concerto. I hope you found these tips helpful. Let me know if you would like a part two or even part three on score studying because I have a lot more tips I could give you. Again, this vlog was inspired by my current partnership with Prime Phonic. You can use my code CelloDoll with the link in my description below. Try and explore Prime Phonic yourself and use this resource in your own score studying. Thank you dolls so much for watching. Once again, I'm the Cello Doll and you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and of course here on YouTube. Please give the video a like and subscribe to show your support. And Chelly and I will see you next time for more tips and videos. Bye.